Hey, it's going on guys, it's Yui, and today we're going to talk about some great runes, something I haven't actually covered on this channel before, but today we're finally going to take the plunge. The um, reason I didn't is because I kind of thought they were very useless, and after testing them and actually using them for the first time, I can actually say that they are definitely, in fact, almost useless. Um, if you don't know what great runes are, there are items that you can equip onto your character via the grace. Um, you do get these items via major bosses, and upon using a great rune or upon using a rune arc excuse me you do gain the effect of the great rune that is stated here and it will last until you die now they are very very weak buffs <laughs> they don't really give you much and the fact that you have to use a certain item to just gain the effect of it is kind of annoying i wish that it's had passive effects and then you pro use a rune arc and gain an extra effect that would have been nice um, but the fact that you have to use an item to gain the effect is pretty stupid, and the fact that these effects aren't even all that great to begin with. But there are some decent ones that will actually help you throughout your playthrough, if, you, you know, if you're starting off near. Okay, we're just going to rank all of these great runes from best to worst. Starting off with the best one, the great rune of the unborn. This is the great rune you require from Renala, and it is the only great rune that you cannot actually equip or use. It just gives you the passive effect of being able to respec your character. And unironically, this is the best Great Rune in the game. There you have it. Okay, now for the actual best Great Rune in the game that can be equipped, I'm going to go with the Godric's Great Rune. Now, obviously, this one is acquired from Godric himself. And what it does is give you plus five in every single stat. And obviously, this is really, really good, especially early game. And that's where you're acquired as well, so it makes for a really nice pairing. Now, one thing I will not use this for is later levels, because you're going to be reaching your soft caps and the plus fives that you get from the great, great rune itself is going to give diminishing returns really unless you are going for a build that has like heavy stat investment so say if you're going with like a faith arcane based build with like a dexterity based weapon you're pretty much going to be using every single stat here except for intelligence and that's like about 40 45 um levels you're pretty much saving which is really really nice and um, one thing to keep in mind doesn't work in pvp so don't bother using it there i mean it is also really good for trying to hit certain requirements also so if you're pretty much want to use a weapon but you don't have the requirements yet because it requires more strength or something like that you can pop the great rune be able to use it obviously upping your endurance or you're upping your equipment loaders also it just makes for this overall solid build a solid great rune especially early game so it'll definitely help you throughout your playthrough you pretty much just it can carry you throughout the entire game okay number two we have radan's great rune this one will increase maximum hp fp and stamina by 15 total percent which is obviously really good at end game because it's just not going to worry about soft caps whatsoever. However, at early game and mid game, I definitely would not use this because 15% more of not much vigor is not much extra vigor, right? So yeah, definitely utilize this towards end game. And as I'll show you right now as to why this is actually more beneficial than Godric's Great Rune, especially at higher levels. So as you can see, 50 vigor, my total HP is 1700. When I used the Godric's Great Rune, I went to... 1800 which is 55 vigor and if i use a rune arc now i go to 1950 so obviously you see the returns are a lot more beneficial at higher levels so godric great rune pretty much for the majority of your playthrough but once you get to like about 50 vigor and more minded endurance then you can switch over to radan's great rune and you'll benefit more of that number three we have morgoth's great rune now this one will increase maximum hp by 25 percent which is 10 percent higher than what radan's great rune does however it is just going to be HP, not going to increase your FP or stamina at all. But it's still going to have its uses, being that there are a lot of builds out there that still don't really require high FP or stamina. Um, especially stamina, being that the consumption of it isn't really... It's pretty forgiving, Um, especially with like smaller base weapons. You don't really need high stamina at all. And with a lot of builds, you don't really need much FP either, especially if you're not really using spells. And some Ashes of War are, can be pretty cheap as well. So if your build doesn't really use any of those, Morgoth is probably your best option. Now just showcasing how much more HP it does give. So it takes me from 1700 to 2130, which is about a couple hundred more than what Redans gave me at 50 Vigor. So yeah, if you're a Vigor boy, this one's your best option. Okay, so at this point, the video is pretty much over. The rest of these great runes are just going to suck giant PP. Pee -pee, so feel free to leave if you want to. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did want to stick around and hear out the rest of the garbage. Um, feel free. So at number four, we have Rykard's Great Rune. This one will restore HP upon defeating enemies, and this amount comes to 80 HP plus 7% of your maximum HP, which on average is probably around about 10%. 
And honestly, that is not that great in the grand scheme of things, being that most enemies in the game end up on like three shotting you or four shotting you. So you're gonna need a lot more than that. Yes, it will stack with other um, HP regen buffs, which is kind of nice. However, being that you have to kill enemies to get it, it's not really that great because um, being that sites of grace are like three seconds apart from each other, it's not really that big of a deal. And obviously in boss fights, it's gonna be completely useless because you have to get a kill to get your health back. So yeah, in all honesty, I just don't really see much use for Rykard's Great Rune. And I think that Redans and Morgoth's just completely outclass it because I feel like these will actually save you in certain situations. I don't really feel like that Rykard will actually, Rykard's Great Rune will actually save you at all, really. It might save a few flasks, but um, that's about it. Number five, Millennia's Great Rune. Now this one, item effect. Attacks recover HP after damage is taken. Now this one is very reminiscent of the Bloodborne Rally mechanic in that when you get hit, you have a five second window to deal damage. And while dealing damage, you actually recover some of that HP back. Now this does not include um, self-inflicted damage, it's only for damage um, received from another enemy. Now the amount of health that you do get back is dependent on what type of attack you use and what type of weapon that you do use. So whether it's a light attack, heavy attack, whether you use a dagger or a colossal weapon, that's all factored in and you get like a percentile based um, of that health regen back. Now, it seems good, but there are many negatives. Many. Um, one of them being that that health regen that you do get back is pretty abysmal. Um, doesn't matter what weapon you're using or what like, attacks that you are using, you're just not really going to get much back at all. Um, and if you get hit twice, it resets. So that five second window you were promised, you can throw that out the window. Doesn't matter. You get hit a second time, boom, all that health is gone. You can't get it back. And for the best part about this, all other healing effects are decreased by 25%. So that includes your flask, that includes um, so things like the Blasphemous Blade, the Taker's Cameo, Assassin's Crimson Dagger, like the Talisman Health Regen perks, and pretty much all other effects of healing are decreased by 25%, except for one. One healing effect, incantations. So incantations healing, they don't get decreased by 25%. They get decreased by 30%, even better. Thank you from software going the extra mile to make sure that we just do not enjoy these unique items that they put into the game. I don't understand. The game is literally harder if you have this um great rune active. Like I don't understand it. Um yeah, don't bother using this one. It's borderline useless. It's actually no, it's actually it has a use. It makes the game harder. There you go. So if you want to make the game harder, definitely use this one. The Mog's Great Rune. So this one is at the bottom of the list. Now why is that? This one is one of the most, it is actually the most intricate great rune in the game. It has a whole bunch of like different like moving parts. There's all these buffs, debuffs, a whole bunch of things going for it. A whole bunch of things not going for it as well. Um, I've never seen From Software actually like create an item as intricate as this. They must have put many hours into this thing. And by God, is it the most useless piece of shit thing I've ever seen in my life. They wasted so much time designing this thing. And just for it to be not fun. Like, I don't understand. They, they really tried super duper hard to make sure like that you we almost had fun, but not didn't quite get there. But anyway, let's talk about it. So what is the Mog's Great Rune? Um, item effect, grants a blessing of blood to phantoms. What the fuck does that even mean? From software, what does that mean? Why don't you ever explain anything? This is this happens all the time. They just like put something on the table. Here, take it or leave it. It's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. But anyway, like I'll explain it. So what it does is when you summon a spirit ash while you have this effect active, they will get the buff called Blessing of Blood, and what it does is will give you 10% of your maximum health back when the Ash gets a kill, and you have to be nearby at the time. And there is a secondary perk, is if you or the Spirit Ash inflict Bleed, and then the Spirit Ash will get a 30% damage buff for 20 seconds. And there is a second part to the Great Rune called the Phantom Great Rune. This is specifically for online use, and what it does is that when you do invade, you get three copies of a consumable item called the Phantom Great Rune, and when you consume that near other types of enemies in the um, host's world, they will actually gain the Blessings of Blood buff and do more damage once again. But you as the invader will actually get a decrease in Vigor, I believe it's like a 10% decrease in maximum HP. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. it. Too long didn't read, it's trash. Um, I don't even need to do talk as to why 10% health regen for um, Spirit Ash kills is useless. 
Uh, you're not really using your spirit ashes to get kills. You're using them to serve as a distraction or to actually like just do damage in a boss fight. So, and in a boss fight, you're not going to really get a kill and the health regen based on kills is not really useful there. Um, I mean, a little bit more damage that the spirit ashes can do, but I guess that's kind of cool. I don't really care. Anyway, that's that. It's at the bottom of the list. Let's leave it there. Don't know why From Software put so much effort into useless things when they could just like put that effort to make these things more fun. I don't understand. Anyway, that's the video. Please like and subscribe. And you know what? I'll see you guys another time. Bye.